1926, Jan Smuts wrote a book called Holism and Evolution. And in that book, he laid out his concept of holism, first time that this term was used. So this video is going to tell you a little about the origins of how he came to that idea, as well as adding an idea of Goethe, which already was there in some of the founding ideas of Smuts' thinking about holism, even though he himself didn't use it directly. So where did Smuts get his ideas from? Well, originally Aristotle is the one who coined the idea that the whole is more than the sum of the parts. That whatever you find manifest in the world, it's always made up of bits, but that there is something creative, something new that kind of holds those bits together and gives it a whole new orientation and direction. Where did Smuts get his ideas from? Well, in the 1890s, Smuts went to study at Cambridge University, where he encountered the writings of Walt Whitman and was quite taken by them. I won't read the poem. You can do that by pausing the video. But the concept that Whitman presents in this particular poem is something that I would have imagined stimulated Smuts quite strongly, where Whitman sees the magnificence of the human body but sees ultimately that it is the expression of something which is invisible, what he calls the soul. And this is this idea that the parts of the body are really an expression of something greater than those. And Smuts called this the human personality. And he had two people in mind. One was Walt Whitman. The other one is Goethe, who he saw as being expressions of a very powerful and uh, evolved version of personality, human beings who are able to, to have very powerful experiences and to unite them in themselves to grow bigger and stronger. And he was quite taken by that idea. But he didn't stop there. He thought about all of evolution and how did this human personality come about? And he started with energy and matter and saw how energy and matter at some point must probably, and of course with the Big Bang Theory, which we now have, Smuts didn't have that at his disposal. We know that energy and matter occurred at the Big Bang, and they weren't as evolved and mature as they are today. They went through a process of evolution and transformation to create the environment and the world of the Earth ready for the next phase of evolution to happen, the next level of whole, you can say, to manifest. So we have the four phases of matter and here on earth, they really well balanced. Matter and the conditions of that are now ready for the next substance to emerge. Now that's not the human personality, of course, that's life. And um, Smuts hypothesize and, and evolutionary theory um, certainly backs this up, that in the beginning, life was really not a very sophisticated or evolved um, manifest manifestation of what it could bring. It had to go through its own evolutionary processes from microorganisms to eventually um, the greatest trees and other plant forms and animal forms um, that have evolved and developed as life matured. Now Smuts says life at some point must have reached a level of maturation that a kind of consciousness, what he calls consciousness or mind, a kind of consciousness, and we can think of it as consciousness related to the higher animals, was able now to have a body so mature that it could manifest. And so this new substance um, beyond energy and matter and life could now take hold of a body and express itself through the body. And you can see from the pictures, just a kind of a sense of the range or a bit of the range of what animal consciousness um, can manifest and does manifest. And of course, um, Smuts didn't stop there. He says, okay, this entire and magnificent range of consciousness that uh, has now also gone through its evolutionary phase has also reached a level of maturity with the higher animals and then through the primates and you can see the picture of them expressing grooming and nurturing and affection and intimacy 
Um, so a particular primate, um, the Homo species, also then evolved and transformed and matured to such a point that a new substance could evolve, could evolve or could manifest. And this is what Smuts called the personality, what I call the growing self. And I call it the growing self because Smuts really, that's what he expresses. And I don't, I prefer that to personality because we have other things that we talk about in the modern day when we refer to personality. So the human personality has this ability, so says Smuts, to integrate these enormous and powerful experiences into self, to grow the self, to be more capable, to manage even more powerful and, uh, and more engaging experiences, and to keep oneself intact, irrespective of the power or the strength of those traumas or joys or whatever they may be, that we don't lose ourselves. Now, Smuts, being the extraordinary human being he was, recognized very clearly that you can't be at the end. This is not the end of an evolutionary sequence. We are part of it. And he recognized that the human personality is still in a very immature, very unevolved state. And so he hypothesized further and he said, well, like all the other substances that he had examined, we also need to go through a maturation and an evolutionary process to mature and that when we reach that state of uh, mature evolution, so again, something new will be able to manifest into the human personality, which has evolved into consciousness, into life, into matter, uh, and into energy. And he sees this as an ongoing process. So he hypothesized what that could be. And although he was a deeply religious man, he didn't turn to religion in this regard. He turned instead to what he saw as the highest of the values and ideals and that we can when we can really embody those and live according to them then um, something new would happen something um, with the same difference you can imagine the same if you look at the leap of consciousness between the human and the animal the leap of change again from animal to life life to matter matter to energy so he sees a similar kind of a leap occurring when the mature personality is able to enable something new to manifest. And this idea, I've taken further to look at it from a religious perspective, because every religion has recognized that the human personality needs to evolve, needs to mature. We haven't arrived. And they give us ideas. They talk about God. And obviously, that's a term that would require quite a lot of understanding, but they all come to an idea of what will happen to the human being, whether it be Buddhist enlightenment, Christian manifesting of the Holy Spirit, um, Jewish and Islamic uh, attaining of paradise, Hindu uh, nirvana, Atman, um, this, uh, this, the, the kind of Pentecostal flame is this uh, Hindu concept of Atman, which will manifest in the human being. So all religions are very clearly pointing towards something, and if they're true, of course, when that's a debate, then they're pointing towards something which could be the next state of evolution. So that's the ground of ideas that I will be using in all my further videos on holism, um, and uh, I really hope you will take to the idea and start wrestling in your own minds on, on uh, what that might be and watch some of the further videos. But before we end this video, what I would like to share is also the Goethean picture of what he does with this idea that Whitman had. Now, Goethe precedes Whitman. And um, or, or in fact, I suspect they were even alive at a similar time. But what Goethe does is very scientific. He studied plants. And like Goethe looking at the human body parts, saw them as an expression of something invisible, soul, is what he referred to. So Goethe in his study of plants, um, and uh, he did it both scientifically and artistically, as you can see the diagrams left and right and published in this book of his, The Metamorphosis of Plants, came to an experience of what he describes as something flame-like. And he called it the, the creative, principle of what stands behind all plant manifestation. So he saw, he actually became transformed quite, he was quite taken by his experience when he had this uh, vision or this image of this 
flame-like creative principle, this archetypal presence that stands behind all plant manifestation. And uh, in that way, what he saw was not just every plant manifestation as an expression of this, he also recognized that there could be other plant manifestations that haven't come to pass yet, or maybe have and then passed away, but that could also be possible from or as an expression of this archetypal flame creative principle that he had perceived. So those are all the ground ideas that every further video of mine on holism will be based on. Um, I will go into much more depth on Goethe's Urpflanz, on uh, Smuts holism, and look at, uh, at many different things from a scientific and a religious perspective uh, about how holism can really help us to understand and place and contextualize what it means to be a human being and a human personality in the modern day, our evolution within an educational framework, within a perceptual, perceptive framework in our relationship to science and our relationship to religion, which have been the focus of my research. So I hope you've enjoyed the video. Please uh, stop by and watch some more in the future. Thank you.